Guys, welcome to today's video. In today's video, we will look into a scenario in which the Russo-Ukrainian war causes Russia to have a civil war, and it will start with Russia being kicked out. Will be the first part, but it will probably start before they're fully kicked out, just because of distrust in this war effort, including technically it kind of happened twice. If you think about it, the Freedom of Russia Legion. And at another time, it came to be the Wagner kind of thing. Yeah. As they stared around Belgorod, where they last started, they have more success this time than last time. And as Ukraine starts advancing further back against Russia... Russia and people lose trust into the government, which is a big deal of this, because, yeah. And then the West might support groups to rise up after this, with the Western nations seeing a good idea to start a democratic revolt. They decide to start it around democratic revolution around the Democratic Revolution is funded around Volgorod, based out of there, and it moves around, eventually meeting the Caspian Sea by the Kazakh border. But Russia's starting to lose power quickly and steadily. And then more revolt groups happen, including a Basically, Calarian moving group. This is a democratic group aimed at freeing Calaria, which is an area that for some reason decides in this video it's a good time to have independence. But this eventually turns more from this into a democratic group aimed at taking over Russia. Comes eventually for their independence, but then comes a Siberian Revolt. This one is authoritarian. And so on till the a communist group rises up in the north. And so it keeps evolving until the Russo-Ukraine war is basically over. Ukraine is supporting some of the democratic groups most likely. But no one knows, because right now, all of these revolutions aren't really known about, probably, by the whole world. And with Russia falling apart, you know, it's not a good thing to see. With that, with a communist group and many other groups, this war looks like it's going to evolve into something much worse. With the Clarion group having managed to expand a lot, this is a democratic group and Clarion, kind of. With the freedom of Russia ready to take over the government. Like, that's what they are against the government. And then this democratic group steadily advances. But then it, soon after, big chunks of land in Russia have now left to support a side. Are they big chunks, maybe? Not really. Oh, the communist revolution in the north. These areas come to support it. With the freedom of Russia becoming mostly supported in the east around here. And most revolutions have already got areas to side with them. So at this point now it's time to do borders, make a thumbnail about this, and have the revolution continue into civil war an area of support they managed to continue their revolutions with the eastern group which is an authoritarian group not exactly communist but pretty pro Asian countries like China that they want to improve relations with with countries like India probably not in the same thing but they are March being a pretty successful one. 
With the Russian government losing control over its military at this point, most likely. And his troop numbers are probably after plummeting. His people probably took their region's choice over what the government chose. Most likely, you know why? Because you all might like their regions more. Who knows? There are a few areas wanting to gain independence, like Galeria, which has unified with a group who is kind of fighting for the same like principles. With this democratic one being pro-Ukraine, more so the communist is just communist, as I guess you could guess. Communists are the main scary ones. But they don't have support of the world. And so, yeah. With them basically being the new Bolsheviks is what they call themselves. Which seems like a sensible name, I guess. And there's areas debating might that might declare independence. You know, it's like Tartar's Dan, there's Yakuts. But for simplicity, that might not happen. And Evrai is doing what they can to try and take power. If two of these groups on Ukraine's border, Ukraine's going to pick which one it most likely would align with, which I would say is the democratic one, because the other one is against Russia's regime, but who even knows what it wants to do. With St. Petersburg being firmly in control of a democratic group, which this is more so for Claria's independence, and then, or, yeah, for a democratic Claria, just fighting for its independence. And I think now is a good time to see who is internationally supporting who. Big chunk of the Middle East and India and Central Asia and then NATO and some allies are supporting the Russian Democratic. Nobody's supporting freedom for Russia for some reason. But right now, no exactly is against them, and so for the communists, but with the pro-Chinese group is doing pretty well. And then Finland supporting the Clarion group, because why not? But Freedom for Russia is still doing a good job. With the weapons being sent into some of these places, right now the most ideal group to support is not this. With the Clarion Revolt going pretty far, with their revolutions all working well. With the, with the Russian government, the central Russian government, starting to collapse, this group does. And with Wagner with no home, what do they do? Well, they have nowhere to hide. So they move into the communist area. And they help them. But for how long? Who knows? With that area probably going to fall eventually, with pro-Chinese area with Chinese manufactured weapons, they managed to make a cut, a big chunk of Cam Chad away. The Americans not liking this. Let's see how the Battle of Moscow will go for the Putin. Let's see. Doesn't look good. It doesn't look good for them. And so, yeah, they make their encirclement plans around the city of Moscow, which the Freedom for Russia Legion has managed to take, toppling the central government of Russia, which is a big move for all of these revolutions. With Claria finally just basically moving towards its independence, step by step. But it looks like there might be other areas to clear independence. With it seeming like the the communists are doing pretty well. With the democratic and freedom of legion union revolutions planning on uniting against communist and Asian threats. Why would they do that? Because, well, yeah. There's a big threat to both of them. Because I like one of their colors better, yeah. 
Okay. We'll put this together. And now they are a unified front. But really, it's a democratic, basically a democratic push. With the communist threat basically being on the borders. With an agreement being signed by Claria and them saying that Claria will gain its independence. And in turn, they will pass over troops in the land they occupy here. Within the west, the east I mean, war has hit its turning point. In the far east, the collapse of the Russian government has been seen. And now let's see what happens. So yeah, there's a bit of an agreement made for a ceasefire. Let's see what it looks like. One being the democratic forces. <coughs> The democratic forces have much more power, they're the most powerful ones, and have taken much of Moscow's most, Russia's most important territory. With them being centered in Moscow, they have started an offensive into the Ural Mountains. They are crossing mountains, literally. Is that not being the only thing for this communist group, but on the opposite sides of things, they are being invaded. The central government, keep in mind, Putin's still in power. He's just in Kaliningrad, Russia's exclave. He's basically exiled there. And Russia's very weak, which means most likely after this war, there would be independence. Areas wanting independence, which will be a big deal, as that would mean power problems. But there's one good thing. With the power being in their hands, they managed to move further. But one problem is, China doesn't want them directly on the border. So they enter the war. Kinda. They send troops in. Proxy war. Fair. Not enough to hold them back. But... When they get on China's border... China intervenes at this point to hold areas around its territory as friendly nations. As they state, after they finish this, they say, we're done, as long as you agree to recognize this area, with the Russian former area being taken, with many nations unhappy about that, but there's nothing they can do. So now a peace treaty is signed. Republic of Russia. This was pro-China and, in fact, is communist, if I forgot to mention. Slightly communist. Not communist, but like China communist, where trade is okay, but yeah. And they have this territory, too. They kind of look like Russia, but new. And Russia has Kaliningrad back. They still need to get that back. And Chechnya is becoming, proving a problem. Dagestan, Tartarstan, Yakutsk, and many other of the autonomous regions, like Tanutuva, they're all proving difficult for the government because they all want their independence after this war. And so they're still fighting against the government. But we're not going to cover that in this video because today's video is already slightly long. That's pretty much all for today's video. Please like and subscribe. Why should you subscribe? Because we have 83 subscribers till our goal of 1,000 subscribers by September 1st. So if you could, please subscribe, as that would mean a lot for the channel. And what else? You need to like this video. You can subscribe and comment. That's all for today's video. Wild Mamper out, but not till you subscribe. Bye.